Hi DIY family and welcome back to our channel Hat by Ebanks I'm Sasha and I'm Rory and today we're going to show you our kitchen progress busy trying to complete our kitchen renovation as we would have known from our previous video we entered the one room challenge which is actually completing a space in your home over eight weeks yep and we selected our kitchen for this challenge at first i didn't think it was a good idea to select the kitchen because we knew that it would have required a lot of work even though it it wasn't a usable state, state yes but to get it to our <laughs> to get it completed in eight weeks seemed to be a stretch yes within the first two weeks yes <laughs> we completed our kitchen island counter and that was done using epoxy i will have a video on that so i'll leave the link below you guys can go and check it out in this video we'll bring you weeks three four and five of the challenge to let you see exactly what we did over those those weeks most of that work was pertaining to the ceiling so for some reason we decided to take upon ourselves for some reason Rory wanted to try drywall and decided that the ceiling was the best place to start the ceiling yeah most difficult part <laughs> but you'll see all of that in the video so hope you enjoy um and let us know what you think we did a lot of work on this a lot of hard work what we call it rory sweat equity yeah all right so hope you enjoy this video operation kitchen ceiling day one today and it's diy weekend and we'll be taking on some drywalling today we're going to be drywalling our ceiling as part of the one room challenge uh, and putting in some recess lights in the kitchen. We're also going to be wrapping our vents and installing the insert that we're going to make from a DIY. So let's get started. So we're still in day one of drywall or ceiling. Um, Rory just finished framing the perimeter of the kitchen and we also put in the wall for the vent. So this is the framing and we intend to do a tray ceiling and now we're about to tackle the studs to put in the studs so Rory how was it it, was, it wasn't bad lessons from framing framing 101 you have to have with dimensions before we start I took like an hour just try working out how far out we want the, the tray to come and how far down so as you see I have a few markings on the wall where we initially wanted to drop it about seven seven inches down and then realize it may look at too may look too low and crowded so we brought it back up to five inches and uh, the next thing is check the, the ceiling the for levels, levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so started out pretty well like this section was was easy until we reached over the cabinet so the work here was pretty tight but um we got over that hurdle and what i did also i switched drill bits to a longer bit 
because what was happening is when I was drilling the, the hole, so we're using concrete screw to hold in the truck. So when I was drilling the holes, it was hard to get the screw in because of the dust. So I had to just drill a longer, a deeper hole, and then the screws went in easier. So that's the next tip. Also, look out for any electrical wires, pipes, water pipes. So our panel is right here. Luckily, I, I knew where the pipes ran already, so I didn't have to take off the panel. I knew that the pipes went up right here, through them, and turned up into the decking. Our other concern was realized over that section where the ceiling became lower than expected. So the, the whole thing is level. So we, we have a manual level and we also have a laser level. I didn't really use the laser level that much. But, um, but the, the manual level worked out because what I did is when you start using the long tracks, which is 10 feet long, it's, it's pretty easy to, to manage to get it level. So you just level the center of it. However, when I, when I came to this corner, from, from, from I started doing this corner, I knew, I knew it wasn't going to be level. Well, it's, it, it was going to be tight. So it's level, but as you see, the ceiling comes down into this corner. Where's my tape measure? So our, our height should be five inches down. And I think it's about four and a half inches down in this corner, but it is level. So it is so level. So the ceiling slope. Yeah, so the ceiling has a slope over this side. And I don't know why. So we, to fix it, we can either drop it, drop the bottom track, or just leave it alone. Yeah, maybe you won't see it. Or it, maybe you will. Yeah, it, it is over in a corner, but based on our design, with the tray coming out further than, well, it's gonna come out and then go back up. I think we're bringing it out about seven inches, eight inches, nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> so we still haven't agreed on that just yet. Maybe even 10 inches. So it will come out and then we're gonna go up. And we're also gonna have the, the drywall ceiling right here. And we'll install recess lights in it. Yes. Yes, so we are going to, what we're going to do now, install the studs and frame the tree. Also, what, what would be recommended is, so, so I, ideally our initial plan was to have the tracks for the upper section further out here. However, it would be difficult to mount it to the wall right here. And we would have to do some, some more calculations to then get the angle and the height to match up with the bottom tree that we want. So what we're doing is having the tracks here. What, what may become difficult is to mount the drywall, to screw up the drywall up into this bottom track. But what we're going to do is because we're running studs and you're not going to see over this section so all we literally need to do is just to get the screw at an angle through the drywall and it, and it should hold up here and we're also going to run the studs i think we're going to run it two directions so this direction and we may run some that direction so we're going to work that all now and then once we run the, the studs then we'll put a lot of the support in the studs when the truck comes out you're not going to see around this section so we're not even going to put a, a drywall right here and that's because of the, the closeness that we selected and we saw that design in, on youtube <laughs> so if if we were going low so like the seven or eight inches then i think we would have to put a drywall here because you may you may see it depending on how far up we carry the lip so what do you think, leave it or drop it? I would have to move four screws, drill over the hole, and then over here will be on level. So now we have framed the roof, the ceiling, 
but we still have to so these we can move them around so we're going to move them around to ensure that um, we're getting the right support for the drywall and also providing the support for the tray that we're going to put around the perimeter and we're going to add some more support in, more support in here so that's what you'll see us doing but it's pretty much framed Operation kitchen ceiling day one is complete and we have fully framed the ceiling. Sorry for the really bad lighting. Um, we still have to go and add some support. I have to secure these to the ceiling itself because right now they're just connected to each other. So we have to add some support here. But um, this is where we are at the end of day one. And we're signing out. We started day two with installing the drywall onto our tracks and studs. And quickly realized that we didn't have enough studs in one section. So we had to stop install some more studs to support the drywall before we could mount the drywall onto the ceiling once we had enough studs and support we were able to mount the first piece of drywall to our ceiling kitchen ceiling <laughs> day two well day three because yesterday well last night we spent a few hours and did that part of the drywall but before we get to the drywall I want to talk to you about the tracks or the framing that we did yeah so <clears throat> so this is about version three or four framing <laughs> And what we realize is based on the design <clears throat> that we that we're creating it didn't make sense for us to to run the track along the perimeter of the wall or the upper layer so we're having two layers so what will happen is so we our first version had the track on it along here going right across and uh, why we had done it like that is we thought that we would have carried the drywall flush to the end. But based on our design, we can stop the drywall right here on these studs. Because we're going to have a next drywall, which is the second layer, extending out 10 inches. And then it will also have a lip. Yes, Sasha with her fancy design. Please. So because this will extend and have a lip, it will literally hide everything over here so we're preserving on material both track and studs and drywall so this is why we have a few long studs along the side which is eight inches out so we have one here one over there and then to add some more rigidity to our overall structure we added two more studs in the middle and we then secured the studs themselves with other studs running in a di different direction. And all of our studs are then secured to the ceiling with concrete screws. So you can see the concrete screw there, over there. I wouldn't want this thing falling down on us. Especially after we put it in so much hard work. So just a, ne <clears throat> a next fun fact is if we were going to go with the design by having the track, the upper track along the perimeter here, we couldn't install this one until we screwed up the drywall. Because as I said, 
The work area is pretty close, pretty tight for you to screw anything in it. It would have to be screwed at an angle and the possibility that the screw does not go through the drywall good without leaving the heads out. So again, you kind of have to plan how you're build framing out and the frame should accommodate how you're going to lay the drywall. So we started over this side because we wanted to have a pilot run in terms of our design and to do the least amount of cuts this is pretty much three quarter of a drywall because we only did a cut right here then we're gonna start laying them going down that way but we're instead of running it long way which is eight feet long we're gonna put the four foot in this way to here and then we're just gonna cut one off the edge down to six feet wide so remember our drywall is four by eight so we're gonna use a four and we're just gonna cut the eight down to six and the re main reason why we're doing that is because we want the drywall to span most of the studs at once. So when we run it like this, we'll ensure that it catches, what, two, three, four main studs when we're securing it. Plus, some of them will catch a, a middle stud. Good so far? Instead of putting on our next drywall here, we plan to start from this section because again we want our drywall to span multiple studs so if we started from down there i think one of the drywall would have ended like literally here and then it would only have a piece holding it up so we're starting here and then the four feet will span right about somewhere here so it will have again multiple studs holding it up stay tuned There's no support here. Um, you, you can't really see it now. So it's currently flush. But if we, or, well, when we take this and if there's any movement in the drywall, so you see, one can go up, that will break the compound that we put on it. And you'll see the cracks and the unleadedness. So what we need to do is to put some type of support here. Ideally, it would be good if we could get a stud there, but we don't want to put down the whole drywall to put up a stud. So I'm going to try and support it with a 2x4. And the idea is I'm going to ease this down, put the 2x4 on top, and the 2x4 should be tall enough to meet the ceiling and brace this, and then we'll screw both of them to the 2 by 4 so that will give it its support. So it should not sink over time. So that's the idea. For the others, we're just gonna put a, a stud on where, where the overlap, so to avoid that sagging effect. 
why, why this happened is the gap between this these two studs is too wide so we're trying to get it at two feet apart but i guess we went the easier out and just try to make everything equal and so this gap is about three feet wide so because no support is right here that's why you cannot see the sand so we're going to fix that design again guys here you can see what I did I uh, laid out a full length truck and then I screwed up the drywall to the back of the truck and this drywall is five inches tall and this is going to give us the floating effect so because the space I'm working with is very tight so what I did is uh, try and pre-assemble part of the support and then this part here is going to go up into the top of the ceiling where the studs are already and I'm going to screw the support from behind here into the studs in the ceiling and then the floating board is going to go underneath so I'll show you when it's when it's up Let's jump right in. Hopefully we can complete all the drywall and connect some lights tonight. Or at least, well I know I'm going to finish this section in a few minutes and maybe we'll just skip and do some lights. <laughs> That's what you call sweat equity. Yeah. So, as you can see, over Rory's head, we're able to complete a little section. Let's show you how it's looking. And this is where we are. But guess what, guys? We ran out of screws. So, it's a wrap for the night until tomorrow so we still have that little piece here to put on and then we have the front piece to put on for this side and then we'll be done done with framing and drywall installation next is compound, compound. yeah we have for compound and install the recess lights well cut out the holes for the recess lights first Joyful. then we compound and sun and compound and sun and compound but yeah it's a wrap day four is done guys signing out <laughs>
next thing we did was to cut out the squares for the recess lights and then we installed them and we'll do a separate video on installing recess lights in the kitchen ceiling so that you can get a more in-depth understanding of the process So we did buy a regular vent and we got our vent at active however we had to do a little work to make it fit into the space and once again we'll bring that to you in another video because it's quite a long process so this is us installing the vent into the space now just to complete it um, and we will show you some more give you some more information on how we did the vent So we also did um, drywall ceiling or a drop ceiling over our island and tea bar area and this time we used <laughs> the lessons learned from the first section and we put all the studs in the same direction measuring 24 inches apart so that the drywall would overlap on the studs and we wouldn't have any problems with any sagging so yeah and this is the final step of well drywall part one because we still have to compound and sand all of the joints and screw holes in this drywall Do you think we'll finish? Do you think we're gonna finish on time? <laughs> Eight weeks seems long, but it went by pretty fast, especially because it was all DIY. All right, guys. Well, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our video, and check out our previous content. We do have a lot more coming about the kitchen and other spaces in our house as we try to completely renovate our home. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye, Bye everyone.